Yeah, you'll hold this. If you can hold it like at the end of the water. There was a water snake over there fairly Where? recently. <laughs> it was right over there, but it ran away. So this is 3.7 meters wide. So you're 10. Yeah, so then we'd say like, okay, if I want to take 10 measures across 3.7 meters, I would divide it by like 11 so that I have one fewer and take it. So you're literally just making a dot? 0.37 okay. meters. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're going to measure discharge today, guys. Um, you actually get a lot of information from this kind of measurement. You get information about depth and width and discharge and velocity. So this is a Marsh Creek Burning Flow Meter. This is a very widely used method of doing this. It um, measures velocity by pressure on the end of the sensor. So you want to be kind of careful with it, not bang it around too much in the rocks. Um, so you put it on this rod and tighten it. There's a little screw here. If you Loosen it too much, it'll disappear forever, so be careful. This is called the top set rod. Um, we measure velocity at 0.6 of depth. That is considered the most representative depth. Um, and what a top set rod does for you is automatically calculates 0.6 of the depth. So the way you use this is kind of strange. Every line so remember how this is kind of similar to what we did with those sensors in the river. Every three lines is a meter. Every two lines, no, sorry. Every three lines is half a meter. Every two lines is a tenth of a meter. And every like individual line is two centimeters, I believe. And the, what you do is you put it in the water. downstream of it and kind of a little bit off of it so that you're not in front of the flow and inhibiting that. Um, you usually do this at 10 points across a given width and then at 10 locations down the stream um, so that you get a really good measure of average depth as well as velocity to calculate your discharge width. So what we might first come here is with a tape and see what the width is so I can say, well, if I want 10 measurements, I'm going to put it every Whatever, but just in terms of how to take this one measurement, we put this guy in. I know this three lines is half a meter. I know this two lines is a fifth of a meter. So I know that this is about 42 centimeters deep. So then on here, there's a little number system where the first digit is on this bar. I'm going to raise this to four. And then the second or the ones digit is on the fixed bar. So you'll match that to two so that you see the four and the two. I'll go through this with you guys individually, and then it automatically sets the sensor to 0.6 of that 42 centimeter depth. Um, so you want to make sure that you're facing it upstream. You'll see the value kind of bounce around on here a little bit. You can adjust the interval, but you kind of want to average a couple measures in a row. Um, you can set this to be in whatever units you want. Right now I'm reading 0 0.02 meters per second, which seems reasonable. Um, sometimes you'll see negative values where the flow is really wrapping around and going back upstream, and that's not impossible, but you of course want to look at it and say, does that seem reasonable for what I'm seeing? Um, so again, you do this at 10 points across a width, and then 10 transects down a stream is pretty standard protocol, and use that to calculate discharge and average velocity. Okay, so 